Friday, L, I'm hot like hell. Turn off your TV and listen to Too Raw for TV Thursday at 11 p.m. on Block Talk Radio with my man Palmetto Star. He's a phenom. Be on your peon. Turn your TV off. Now, it's no secret that the Earth and actually all the planets in our universe are increasing in temperature. They're rising in heat astronomically. And a lot of documentaries have been made um, to talk about that, including one by Al Gore. Uh, and everything is changing, you know, and a lot of people are talking about the Mayan prophecy of 2012. But what does this transformation transformation mean to you? We're going to be talking to a call, call for L man and building on this fantastic thing he's making is He's made, he's coming back to cyberspace today exclusively on Two Raw for TV to talk about that and his journey. I call you with us. Hey, how you doing? What's good with you, man? Well, a lot of other people have asked me to come online and do radio interviews and online interviews and things like that, but it just didn't feel that nobody had really the pull to bring me out of my out of out of the shadows, so I, I just I don't know. I just feel like this is home. You know, you you, you brought the idea Thank for me to do the interview, and I really couldn't say no. So I just wanted to be here to support you. You know, it just it just feels like we've only known each other for a short period of time. But it just feels like we go way back. You know, and just okay. coming coming here tonight, I kind of got that nostalgic feeling. How we used to chop it up. You know. I used to be on my show. I used to be on your show. Now we're doing the uh, we're doing the the monthly conferences with the Knights of the Round and everything. So it yeah. just feels like home, man. It feels like the good old days just to come back on Two Raw. No doubt, man. Appreciate it. Definitely part of Two Raw for TV family forever, man. Uh, talking about Transformation 2012. Now you have done something that not a lot of people would do. That is totally have a following, a huge following of thousands of people, and then seemingly just drop abruptly out of the public eye. Um, now, what made you decide to do that, um, and how does that relate to the transformation of 2012? <clears throat> well, um, do, you ever, do you ever try to concentrate on something, and let's say at the library, if you're trying to do some research, or you're on the verge of uh, writing, like let's say maybe a term paper, and you're, you're trying to uh, you're trying to find your thoughts and gather your ideas, and somebody is in the library just talking on the phone, mm-hmm. and you, you just feel like telling them just shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? It got to the point where I needed I needed some peace and quiet in my life. I needed some silence. And um, I started to realize that <clears throat> I didn't want to turn into an entertainer. And I was starting to turn into an entertainer mm-hmm. in- instead of being a person who is um, on a path of spiritual growth, but they happen to be making some artwork as well. And yeah. it got yeah. to the point where I was turning into an entertainer and it got to the point where I was being associated um, along the lines of a certain movement that I felt could no longer offer me what I needed to go to the next step. And um, I just decided to, to back off. Um, that, that was the main thing, the mental, the mental silence, the mental peace of mind to work on projects that are important to me, projects that are uh, of the utmost importance for really where we're at as a, as a species right now, and and rather than rather than um, the, the the word that comes to mind, and they, and they use this word in the hip hop community a lot, is fell off. Mm-hmm. So they say so and so fell off. Mm-hmm. I've heard people say this about every every actor, every actress, every rapper. Every entertainer, every dancer, every singer, they say so and so fell off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like like let's say Kelly Rowland. I I remember all the bloggers saying how she fell off and she's not successful, and because Beyonce was really killing it 
And then she came out with that one song about motivation, remember, like a few months ago? And then she popped to the top of the charts. The point I'm trying to make is that you can you can take a hiatus and you don't always have to be in somebody's face. But people are still going to mm-hmm. talk shit regardless and say that you fell off. So I just decided I don't, I don't want to go the entertainer route. My, my, my main focus in life is spirituality. I don't want to take a, a spiritual hiatus. Another another way to look at it, another way to look at it, <clears throat> is to follow the chain of events of of where we've been as a people to get to where we are now. Mm-hmm. Um, just just briefly, um, to give a like a brief history of everything in in sixty seconds. The first thing we had to do as a people was find out what was the situation that we were in. Because we really didn't comprehend it for many years. It just seemed so big. And a lot of us don't still comprehend it because the situation has become, in the, 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 the prison and the, and the system that has bound us has become more technologically advanced and more political. But that was the first step that we had to do, and we've done that to some extent or another. We've we understood the situation that we're in. And then mm-hmm. that led to who am I in, inside yeah. the situation. So we, we spent years and decades finding out who we are, what is our past, where did we come from, what are the lies in history, what is the truth about our biological makeup, what is, you know, what was the correct diet, what is the yeah. correct way to live? What family structure did we used to have? You know, how, mm-hmm. you know, what is the right religion for us? Then we came to the to the point where we felt like we had that, and then the next step was pride. Yeah. And we got to a point where we were were proud to be who we are, to know where we came from, to know the truth about our descent and our impending ascent. And I I felt like we've gotten to the point where we stopped at that level. We stopped at that stage of pride. And even in in the most spiritual, free-minded black thinkers, they still stopped at this threshold of mm-hmm. of black pride. Mm-hmm. And the next step is, who knows? That's the big blank. What is the next step? Because we've been proud since the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. What is the next step? Exactly. The next step? The next step is now that we have some pride and some self-esteem, that's not... That's not it. That's not the solution. Because we've been proud for a few decades now, and, and we're still not where we need to be. We've gone through a stage where we, we, we've been extremely angry and furious at the white man. The white man is the devil. Mm-hmm. Where did mm-hmm. that get us? And that, that hasn't gotten us anywhere. We're still not where we need to be. Then we, we went through a stage where we wanted to pick up arms, um, we wanted to build communities like Move in Philadelphia and things like Dr. Malaki York did down south. They all came to naught. Now we're getting into a phase where we want paperwork and fancy names. And we got we got Moors talking about if you just fill out this paper, you'll get to where you need to be. If you file this petition, and if you sue this politician, and if you get this land grant, you'll get to where you need to be, but we're still not free. And so yeah. now we're after, we're after the money now. And since, since maybe the 90s, 2000s, you have more black millionaires than ever in the history of money, but we're still not where we need to be. So I got to the point where I saw nobody in the world 
either online or offline, was going to be able to tell me what is the next step for our people. And so when I came to that realization, I just went back into the back cave and I went back into the shadows and I, I said to myself, the only way I'm going to find this answer is alone. Nobody's going to be able to give it to me. And at first I started to get frustrated and I almost wanted to lash out at other people who I felt could have been giving us that answer of what is the next step. Mm-hmm. And I decided to bite my tongue and just go away for a while and figure out what that is, what is the next step. And the next step that, I, that I've come up with is that we need to start going beyond what we believe is human. We need to start getting back to our original self. And our original self is something that we consider superhuman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We need to get to the point where we push the envelope of what we think humanity is capable of, and we need to become superhuman. Now, there's a lot of there's a lot of people throwing around the word metaphysical, metaphysical that, metaphysical this, selling DVDs, selling tickets to lectures, selling uh, magical elixirs, and and different books and all kind of bullshit. And not one of these people have yet to display any kind of supernatural power, ever. They'll teach you how to get it. So I've decided this is the next step because if you look at all of our entertainment, which which I said earlier, I don't want to turn into an entertainer. Because I realize entertainment is always on the cutting edge. It tells you things. It, it, entertainment introduces things to your consciousness that you're not ready to accept yet. So entertainment introduces those things in the form of fiction, and it's more palatable. And then 10 years later, it can become nonfiction. You, you follow what I'm saying? Exactly. So, exactly. I, I you notice that a lot. lot. I, I think yeah, you, yeah, know, I know, you can I notice that a lot, lot trending in rap. Well, you notice that a lot trending in rap right now uh, with songs like Lotus Flower Bomb and stuff like that. Songs that have an esoteric feel to it and that you may, that maybe are subliminal right now. And I want to say that I call it, he has definitely been in the forefront with that metaphysical rap movement, definitely taking it to another level and shaping and transforming uh, what is hip hop. Um, and I mean, we're talking about transforming. Now, how do you see people to take those first steps into becoming what you say as more original selves, um, what I think Nietzsche would describe as the Superman? What are what are steps that would that you would describe taking, uh, you know, to go on that journey? Oh man, um, what steps would I suggest the people to take to start um, redefining? Or, or turning, or, or or turning back into our original selves. Um, for, for the first thing that we need to do is we need to let go of the hate. Um, at this point, there should only be love. And then, if somebody's fucked up, you can you, you might you might have pity for that person. But that's the worst it should ever go, is pity. Pity is actually a form of love if you do it right, not not a, in a kind of silly way. But, I mean, we need, to, we need to take responsibility for everything and see everything as an extension of yourself and every race as an extension of the original race. And if we do that, we'll stop playing the blame game and um, the, the damage that we do to our to our, our spiritual development by being angry and and hating and thinking that there's such thing as a racial enemy is um if, if people knew the damage that it did to your 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 spiritual body and your karma 
they hopefully they would stop immediately. But that would be number one. That's the number one thing holding us back. And I would say the the next step would be um, think of yourself. Don't think of yourself as black anymore. That shit is done. You have to think of yourself as a whole new species. You have to think of yourself as the golden race. You have to think of yourself as something new that's never existed on this planet before because the whole black pride thing has has ran itself out and it's come to an end. Right now it's time to think of yourself as a new species. Um, and it's time to really um, stop being information junkies. I would say that would be a crucial point because the information age has now come to a close as well. I guess you could say it was the 90s and the 2000s. It was the information age, the the, the dot-com boom. Now everybody has a computer in their pocket. Anybody can, can go on their phone and access any information they want within 5 to 15 seconds, but yet we're stupider than we've ever been in the history of the planet. You ask the average person anything, any any random question, and they don't know. So the information age is over. It's time to stop becoming addicted to information and boil it down to the essence of how do I, um, how do I transform? Um, the next the next thing I would say is disassociate yourself from any group. Any group, any anything that you think you're a part of, whether it be a race, a political organization, a religious organization, um, a family, everybody around you is going to die. You're not really a part of your family. You're not really a part of anything. Disassociate yourself from any group and think of yourself as just a single spiritual entity. Um, I would say another step would be we have to get into physical fitness and become healthy nuts. All of us, because yeah. n- never, never in the history of humanity has our health been attacked on all fronts and all levels like it is. So you have to be a health nut just to function somewhat normally. You have to become pretty much a, um, a health a health guru. And I would say the next step would be start a meditation practice. Um, I can give I can. Maybe we could give a little bit of pointers about that later, but um, the next thing I would say, just another bullet point, bullet point is um, think of money as inconsequential. Yeah. I would say because this is something that we've become obsessed with in the last couple of decades because for the first time, it seems like we can have a piece of the pie. For the first time, we have mega mogul rappers, and we have football players on MTV Cribs, and it looks mm-hmm. like, damn, I can get that Cadillac. If I follow the rules, I just can get me 10 pair of Jordans and a bucket of fried chicken and an iPod, and I can live the good life. And what yeah, happens yeah. is you break your back and you struggle and you twist and turn and redesign yourself into what you have to be to get that dollar to the point where now you're just a stupid consumer. Mm-hmm. And your mm-hmm. spiritual growth has been put on the back burner. So none of us are going to start the deck at this point, especially not in America. I'm not saying don't get money, but I'm saying whether you're rich or poor or just getting by, whether you whether you have the finest the finest Versace, or whether you have to go to Walmart and get those little pack of T-shirts for ten dollars and wear them, it's inconsequential. It's of no consequence. Use money as just a tool to get your daily bread, your food, your clothing, your shelter, feed your kids, make sure your kids got sneakers and diapers, and move on with the shit. Stop trying to, you know, this this shit is, stop trying to paint the Titanic. Stop trying to be the, the captain of the Titanic. So that would be, I mean, 
just just for starters, how you can start to transform like a, like a little little transformation starter kit. Those would be my bullet points. No doubt, no doubt.